is a Fox Sports presentation. Week 17 in the NFL, and soon a dozen teams will play in Lombardi's Winter Wonderland. But for now, it's time to feel the holiday spirit, and it's time for the NFL on Fox. The Vikes send their wild card greetings to the Cheeseheads, and Minnie, what was once Boone's Metropolis, is now Johnson's joint, as Brad's got his purple ship steered toward the Promised Land. But the Baymen want vengeance for that early season downer, man, and Brett wants St. Nick to deliver some cold playoff games to the frozen tundra. The Cardinals look to slay the Eagles in Philly. Zona won't let this be just another holiday. Hey, just ask the skins. While the Eagles are in the spirit with the NFC's topo, the whiteout that not melt any frosty man. The Falcons fly south to Florida for the winter. That has got the fire, but Bobby, Bobby, that's your teammate. You Grinch. And surprise, look what's under the tree for the Jag. Expansion? Yeah, my reindeer. The Bears go swimming in Tampa's Bay. Chicago Curtis is on the Conway to another grand. Oh, the Bucks' big second half's got a feeling festive. Later today, the boys and skins close out a piece of RFK history. Big D's wishes came true with their fifth straight title. But Barry's asking Santa for his offense back. Meanwhile, Terry's looking to dash through D.C. and the boys. As today, the Skins defend their turf for the last time. Goodbye, old friend. Now, live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood, four guys who hopefully made it on each other's Christmas list. The one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Week number 17 in the NFL, the final week of the regular season and the final game ever for historic RFK Stadium in Washington. But not everything is final in the race for the playoffs. In the AFC, four teams are fighting for three spots, while Carolina and San Francisco continue their battle for the top spot in the NFC West. And hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown, welcoming you to a doubleheader day of action here on Fox NFL Sunday. And joining me as always, my partner, the festive looking Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw. Hey, you announced yesterday that you are now the new head coach, will be of the New Orleans Saints. That's right. Commissioner Paul Tagliabue says happy seasons, happy holiday to everyone. Sends these hats and a congratulatory message to you for the new head Ooh. coaching job. I was hoping he'd send me that fine money for that fight in Kansas City I in 86 like he took. And, and, oh, Howie, you, why don't you put, put this on? on? Why don't you put the hat on? Oh, sure. You want me to put that <laughs> yeah. on? Yeah. I'll put What's the hat on. What's the matter with you? It's I got a size 8 oh, yeah. head, but <laughs> besides that. There you go. Oh, oh he's putting oh, it on the head. Oh, make up. Make up. He did it. Oh, I can't believe it. You know, he did it. That's so you. That is definitely you. This is you. where my life is going. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, what did, how we, what did Howie say to our guy last year? You used to be feared. I was. You, <laughs> feel. you know, we were feared. <laughs> we were. We did. Take that stupid move on. Out. Uh -oh. Hey, big boy says move on. We will. All right, folks. Here's a look at what's happening around the NFL. San Diego Chargers general manager Bobby Beathard and coach Bobby Ross will meet tomorrow, and things could get contentious. Now, Beathard wants to discuss changes on Ross's coaching staff, specifically the offensive and defensive coordinators. How Ross reacts could decide his fate, although Beth Bethard insists now that he wants to retain the five-year coach. In the Giants' quest to find Dan Reeves' replacement, reports that Arizona offensive coordinator Jim Fossil is a lock for the head coaching position are premature. That according to two factions within the Giants. Now, the other name most prominently mentioned in New York is Oakland Raiders offensive line coach Joe Bugle. In any event, the Giants wish to act quickly. All right, John Gruden, the talented offensive coordinator of the Eagles, has told friends that he may be forced to leave Philadelphia, that because of his rift with Pro Bowl running back Ricky Waters. Gruden, however, does in fact have options. 49ers defensive coordinator Pete Carroll, likely to become a head coach next season, has offered Gruden a position. There is also interest in Gruden from the Chiefs, the Raiders, and the 49ers. All right, folks, let's set the playoff table for you. In the NFC, we know the six teams, but there are still some loose ends. As long as Green Bay doesn't lose by 19 or more, they have home field advantage. A Carolina victory, and it wins the West and gains a first round bye. Dallas will host a wild card game next weekend. San Francisco can still win the West with a win 
and a Carolina loss. If the Niners don't do that, they'll also host a wild card game next weekend. Both Minnesota and Philadelphia, we know, will be on the road. In the AFC, Denver has home field throughout, while New England gets the other bye and will host its first playoff game in nearly two decades. Pittsburgh is at home next weekend for its wild card game. Now, the only question remaining, who gets in the playoffs? If Jacksonville beats Atlanta, the Jaguars are in as long as the Chiefs' bills does not end in the tie. Hey, folks, that hasn't happened since 1989. Now, that would also mean Indianapolis would be in, and the loser of Kansas City Buffalo would be out of the playoffs. And speaking of Kansas City Buffalo, cornerback Dale Carter will be out today. He's inactive. Terry, now, for all practical purposes, Kansas City Buffalo is a sudden death game. The loser, will there be serious consequences for the loser in this game? Yeah, based on Jacksonville winning today and, and shutting the loser out, I don't think it really matters the winner or the loser of the KC Buffalo game simply because these are two teams, once they get into the playoffs, aren't, I don't think are going to go very far. The, more, the bigger concern, I think, is in Kansas City after the season as to whether or not Carl Peterson and Marty Schottenheimer remain. Both want to stay, but Peterson normally has a contract by now and doesn't. Now, one of the interesting things is is that I hear is that they may be trying to move up in the Peyton Manning Derby, trying to get Peyton Manning. Jeff George is reported to one they won't, but I'm not sure that Jeff George is the answer for Kansas City. As long as Marty's been there, I've never known where a was all franchise this, quarterback. Where was all this information Joe. during rehearsals? Huh? You know, you're amazing. <laughs> I know. You are Sneaky. amazing. Last, 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 <laughs> last eight games, Kansas City and Buffalo, one and seven, Kansas City is the reason why. According to Kansas City, they've jumped out early. They've made mistakes early. Force Kansas City to do something they don't want to do, and that's throw the football. They want to run the football. And on defense, their third down defense has been atrocious, almost 50%, giving up 50%. And they feel there's been mental errors on every single play recently. And you can't have mental errors, Ronnie, as you know, especially this time of the year. I know. When you look at this defense, with all the experience that they have, man, it should be a, it should be a crime that these guys are committing this many mistakes. And one of the problems that you see there is that no one's communicating. Also, I talked to Steve Bono, and speaking of Carl Peters and Martin Schoenheimer, he says, they can't, they, they won't look me in the face and say, come on, come on, Steve, lead us. Now, why can't you tell him, look, we know that you benched them, but why can't you just sit there and be a man and say, hey, look, guys, I can, I, I'm, well, I'm with you. I'm right, right there with you. Though, Ronnie? Should oh, they, they should to talk to him. And they, they did. Should they benched him. They and, said yeah. it right to him okay. when they benched him. That was the message. And, you know, and Kansas City hasn't played a team that plays a 3-4 defense in 10 weeks, so this is a very difficult game for them to get ready for. He is sneaky. You're right, Howie. He's been It's right there. Ooh. Howie wrote it down for me. He forgot. <laughs> All right, folks. Time now for our Fox Watch, and we begin up in chilly Green Bay. And as we just mentioned, if the Packers avoid losing by more than 18 points today, Lambeau Field will be the site of all of their upcoming playoff games. Dick Stockton joins us now with a preview of today's Packers-Vikings game. And good morning, Dick. Good morning and season's greetings to you all from chilly Lambeau Field, where it'll be in the 20s, and we have snow flurries right now. And of course, as you know, both the Packers and the Vikings are in the playoffs. The Packers trying to nail down the home field advantage and extend their winning streak here at Lambeau Field to 16 consecutive games. Also, the Packers are out to avenge an early season setback. In week four, when the Vikings beat them 30 to 21, the Vikings did a lot of talking, and they did this week when ex-Packer linebacker Jeff Brady had these feelings, saying, I'm coming to Lambeau Field ready to headhunt, and Packer head coach Mike Holmgren in an angry outburst to his team said, Brady will not make a play today, and whoever lets him may be looking for work. So the battle lines are indeed drawn today. And to help protect Brett Favre, the Pack have made a change in the offensive line. Ten-year veteran Bruce Wilkerson will start at left tackle in place of rookie John Michaels, who struggled big time against the Lions last week. Jake Reed of the Vikings, the fine wide receiver with a bruised hip, is expected to play today. Minnesota has a goal as well. They've never finished the regular season with four consecutive victories. They'll be out to do it today. That's the story here. Let's send you to Philadelphia and Kenny Albert. Thank you very much, Dick. The Arizona Cardinals conclude their 96th season here in Philadelphia, where the Eagles are headed to the playoffs, although they feel they have been unfairly scrutinized in the local media. Safety Michael Zordich told us yesterday that it's almost like the team should apologize for making the playoffs. Now, who will the Eagles play next week? They will be on the road in either Dallas, Carolina, or San Francisco. During the regular season, the Eagles split with the Cowboys, and they beat Carolina, but the key is the game is played here at the Vet. Of course, Carolina has not let yet lost at home. It's chilly here in Philadelphia. 
Let's go down to Tampa and Tom Brenneman. All right, thank you very much. The Bears and the Buccaneers winding down the 96 season today, and the Bears are trying to end what has been a terrible drought on the road. They have not won a regular season game in the months of December and January since 1987. And to put that year in perspective, Ronald Reagan was finishing his second term in the White House. My partner, Ron Pitts, his second year in the NFL. Back then, he didn't worry about Christmas shopping. Now, he's looking for deals, as close to Christmas as you can get. And with his reputation of not reaching into the wallet very frequently, Ron Pitts truly is the ultimate bargain shopper. Let's now send it to Kevin Harlan in Jacksonville. All right, John, thank you very much. An electric atmosphere here in Jacksonville for what could be the first ever playoff berth for this team. A win today, and the Jaguars could be looking at the playoffs. And I'm with the architect of this team, Tom Coughlin, the coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You are three and six six weeks ago. Why the turnaround? Well, we started playing better football. We're more consistent. All three phases of our of our game are playing in unison, uh, trying to help and cooperate with one another. We've gotten the penalties under control, got the turnovers under control. I think that's the primary result. And Tom, you make a, a key mid-season decision, getting rid of Andre Ryzen and vaulting Jimmy Smith into what has been a great four weeks for him, the wide receiver. Well, that was a decision based on the idea that we needed Jimmy to get in the lineup to be more productive. Uh, he'd had limited opportunities and contributed very well, and we thought it was time for him to be the starter. How about Atlanta today? Atlanta's a team you have to worry about. Their ability to score, their ability to put points on the board. They've had some turnovers of late themselves, but they certainly can move the ball. You're a guy that didn't show a lot of emotion, but I would assume an hour before kickoff here, your heart's pounding a little bit faster. There's a lot of emotions underneath there now. Let's not accuse me of that, Kevin. Good luck today. Thank you. Tom Coughlin, we send it back to Hollywood and James Brown. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Doubleheader day, the late game. Yes, Washington playing its final game at RFK Stadium, playing host to the Dallas Cowboys. That game will come your way at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on Fox. Let's talk a little bit about that Jacksonville Atlanta game. Now, we don't think that was coach speak like our producer Scott Ackerson does, but Jacksonville is in virgin territory. A must win game today. How do you think they'll react? Scotty loves football talk. Okay, eight man fronts. Eight man fronts are cutting edge stuff. Yes, I love you know, that's eight people. The big right? difference with Jacksonville right now, and, and the most action Atlanta has had, has been on the sidelines. So tune in just for that. Uh, <laughs> Natron Means is a back who I've played against a number of times. I know you've probably played against him too, Ronnie. This guy is a load when he's healthy. And I'll tell you, they're going to have to roll the safety up. They are concerned that Atlanta scores a lot of points because they do score a lot of points, but they also turn the ball over a lot. They can't make mistakes early. They need to pour the ball at them. And when those safeties roll up, Gilbright says they are going to go over the top. Brunel's had an outstanding game, and now he has it back to complement his abilities. Man, Tom Coughlin. I remember last year talking to players down there can't, you couldn't uh, take a kneel on your, uh, you couldn't take a kneel on, a football on, on the football field. You couldn't wear sunglasses in meetings. You couldn't do a lot of things. That's not a bad thing. That's not That's not sunglasses not, in meetings. Like, no, on the field, on the field. Yeah, you have coaches wearing them. You couldn't do anything. But it's a method to the madness. You've only had nine penalties in the last three games. Here they are, You're going to the playoffs. I like this guy, and believe me, as you know. Discipline works. He runs the same kind of ship that Scott Ackerson runs yeah, here. I'll tell you what, yeah. when I went and saw Santa the other day and sat on his lap, he said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, give me the Jacksonville highlights, man. A copy of Burnell throwing that football left, going right, going left. This is one quarterback. I know you're looking at me like I've lost my mind, but this is one guy that I've turned the television set on to watch play. You watch that game day. Not oh, going to be much of a game. But Atlanta, oh, hey, I always yeah. look at you like you've lost well, your mind. I'm telling you guys, I know what I'm talking about. I'm on top of it today. Move on. Howie, I'm glad you convinced Terry to take his sunshades off here in the studio. All right, folks, here's a look at what else is on tap for today's show. Coming up on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. <laughs> In Minnesota, there's been an astronomical phenomenon as the moon's been eclipsed by a bright young shining star. Pam Oliver scopes out the Vikings' Brad Johnson, who's leading his team into the playoffs. And ho, 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 they've got a dasher in the backfield and a defense that loves blitzing. Jolly St. Eric is in Carolina to see if the Panthers can win the NFC West and clinch a first-round bye. Then, you wait all year for it, and today we're bringing it to you. And it's much better than a Tickle Me Elmo dog. It's the Terry Awards 96. So sit back and get ready for the year's best, brightest, and most awesome performances. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. 
Purple Sunday is brought to you by Porsche, who wish to remind you there is no substitute. By Philips Magnavox, bringing the power of the internet to your own television. By Sony's PlayStation, we have over 150 games to choose from, so there. And by American Express and the Charge Against Hunger program. It's another way American Express helps you do more. Time for the Porsche quarterback report. At the end of the season, the winner will receive a 1997 Porsche Boxster. Now, what does Mama <laughs> Navas Genoa say? Well, she said Brett Favre got home field advantage locked up. Steve Young will have a big game come Monday night. I'm going with Steve Young. May the earth tremble. Wow. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Carolina Panthers. The earth will remain stable, we hope. All of that after this. Tonight, you move It's here. Charlie Taylor, one of the stars in that game, and we'll have plenty more memories about RFK Stadium throughout the show. All right, folks, after 35 years, historic RFK will no longer be the home for the Redskins, and we'll be bringing you many more, as I mentioned, throughout the show. But today in Carolina, the Panthers look to wrap up the NFC West crown as they take on the Steelers. And for a preview of that battle, Fox's Eric Clemens joins us now live from Carolina. And Eric, the Panthers certainly know the advantages of playing for the hometown crowd. JB, happy holidays and the Panthers certainly do know a victory this afternoon against the Steelers would make them a perfect 8-0 at Erickson Stadium this year. Give them the NFC West crown and a first round playoff by. Meanwhile, New England's come from behind victory over the Giants yesterday. Pretty much ruined the Steelers' chances of having a first round bye. So the Steelers are playing for a little more than momentum this afternoon. All eyes on the Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers have had a very special season. And the special moments began back in a preseason game against the Buffalo Bills in which second-year quarterback Kerry Collins actually cursed out some of his veteran teammates for poor play. When he talks, we listen. I'm going to be honest with you. And the kid's a second-year guy, but he looks like uh, he's been in the league a long time. He's making the right reads. We know they're going to come in a lot of fire zones, a lot of blitzes, and, and trying to disrupt the timing of, of Kerry. But uh, when they do that, they leave uh, holes open for us. So we have to make sure as a receiving core that we get in those positions that we need to be so when the time comes, we can complete the ball and, and keep the ball moving. There's a lot of similarities with both sides of the football, offense and defense. There's a lot of similarities what we do, and especially you can find that similarity on defense, you know, the 3-4 and the blitz zones and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's going to be interesting. There's some obvious similarities with these teams because of the obvious coaching linkages there, and it should be interesting, as Kevin Green pointed out. Pittsburgh Steelers, though, playing for very little. They're going to rest a lot of the veterans today, and you'll see Cordell Stewart play at quarterback. The story from here at Erickson Stadium. Let's send it back to our Fox Television Center in ho, 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 Hollywood and James Brown. JB? I love that, E-Man. Thanks, Eric. You know, Eric talked about uh, coaching linkages, and, of course, with New England's victory yesterday, the Steelers cannot get a first-round bye. So this becomes a a personal battle Dom Capers against Bill Cower Kevin Green who is very media friendly and will talk about anything didn't say a thing about Cower or the Steelers I think he's upset yeah I think he's upset and I think that uh I've taken a couple of games personal myself because no. oh Ronnie please I don't believe <laughs> no I have and I tell you why is because one of the things that happens when you're in a big game like especially playing against the guys that you've played against going to the Super Bowl like Kevin Green did last year you want to get respect and one of the reasons that you want to get respect is you want to walk off that field knowing that you're a champion. But if you look at this team, Kerry Collins right now has really stepped up and really leading this team offensively. What I like, though, is that he's throwing the ball down the field early in the year. It was controlled passing, getting the Wesley Walls, trying to get to the receivers on short stops. Now he's getting the ball down the field, and he's done a great job. Today. Kerry Collins is the key to the victory. The, the both upset victories of the 49ers, Kerry Collins throwing the football. They will have to throw the ball today to beat Pittsburgh. Only giving up two 
sacks in the last two games, Howie, and Joe Pinder, the offensive coordinator, states the fact that Kerry Collins, although only in his second year, and who will see probably 60 blitzes today, sees him, recognize him, and Pittsburgh will throw nothing at him they don't see in practice. Yeah, you know, these two teams aren't fooling one another. They're looking at a mirror image of one another. They want to pound the ball on offense, multiple scheme defense, blitzes coming from everywhere. But the big key, as you, as you both pointed out, has been Kerry Collins. According to Carolina, Kerry Collins has now totally has a full grasp of that offense. And now they, yes, they are starting to expand the offense. What? And Rod Woodson, they feel Rod Woodson is not fully back. They're going to go after Rod Woodson today. Expanding the offense from? From the five plays. Five plays to seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, let's check out what else is going on around the NFL. Check it out! <laughs> For the Chiefs and Bills, the weather in Buffalo might be frightful. But a win would be delightful because the winner is in and the loser is out in the cold. KC looks for a playoff present for the seventh straight year, and Mr. Marty has won his last ten regular season finales. But Buffalo's not far from the North Pole, so Jim Kelly and his elves hope Santa Claus comes to their town with a win. The Oilers and Ravens will have a blue, blue Christmas at home this year. Houston came close as Eddie was steady and the defense was heady for Baltimore. Then he raved on as he was a very good boy this year. An Indy win at Cincy means a playoff spot arrives in the nick of time. Forget the reindeer, Jimmy H is charting another comeback course while Marshall delivers the gifts. But the Grinches from Cincy can steal the coach holiday playoff hook with that mean one, Mr. Carl, who would rather receive. It's the Dolphins and Jets in Jersey's Winter Wonderland. Dan's Dolphins will once again have themselves a merry little Christmas. Well, sort of. And Kareem is 36 yards shy of being Miami's fourth ever 1,000-yard rusher. In New York, it's silent night, holy night, all is calm. But the playoffs are nowhere in sight. Jets fans will have to again wait till next year for a Meadowlands miracle. The Seahawks and Raiders share some Yuletide spirit by the Bay. With 52 more yards, Joey will jingle all the Galloway towards his second straight 1,000-yard season. While the Raiders won't get any playoff gifts this year, as usual, they've been more naughty than nice. The Broncos bring their full load of gifts and drop them down San Diego's chimney. Denver will be home for the holidays and the entire postseason. Mr. Elway's O has been busier than Santa this season and a run defense that could stop even St. Nick. But the Chargers have a hard-working elf named Tony who really wanted to be a dentist. I want to be a dentist. And I guess Santa's still a little upset. No playoffs for the Bolts this year. The Lions have claws, so Santa's been nicer to the Niners. Detroit's Barry dashes through snow, and with 122 yards, this reindeer rusher can become the first ever with three straight 1,500-yard seasons. San Francisco can bring joy to the world with a win and a Carolina loss and buy themselves an NFC West crown. Bless us, everyone. I can't believe you guys are on my case. Is that you singing Silent Night? Silent Night, That's yeah. the worst James. I have. Huh. <laughs> stick to that. That's why, me, stick to that. I that's thought why, Howie was singing it. <laughs> that's why Joey Asheroff and Nelson uh, Jones, wow. my Washington producer, sang the other parts. <gasps> it, was, it, it wasn't that bad. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. We don't want you to miss what's coming your way. I can't sing. The annual can't. Terry Awards are back, and this year, they're better than ever. Also, a look at the man the Vikings are trusting to get the job done, quarterback Brad Johnson. It's been a long wait, and I've, I've, I've worked so hard and been very patient for an opportunity like this. It's been kind of crazy with Warren being hurt like he has been. Put me on a, on a field healthy against anybody in this league, I say, and I'll compete. And I bet you I'll come out on top. <laughs> 